Games Workshop has been around for a while and has been pumping out models the whole time. Many of those models have gone the way of the Dodo, but I want to look back on those models that will be dearly missed. And those that will not be. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Yanza Battle. Out of production models are an interesting thing. I know I love perusing eBay, looking for a hot deal, and I occasionally stumble on a model that I don't recognize, or one that I have only the vaguest of memories. I check the Games Workshop web store, and sure enough, it doesn't exist anymore. But there it is, available again, usually at a very, very good price, or a really, really expensive one. I have dipped my toe into out of production models here and there, and although I love the modern look of 40K, there is a charm to the old stuff. They have a history, they tell a story, the evolution of the Warhammer aesthetic. So I wanna go through the five models that although awesome have since left us and the five models that are better off dead. Now this list isn't models that I wish were still sold. It's not a bash on Games Workshop for being so foolish as to discontinue models. I get it, everything has its time. I just wanna celebrate five awesome models and poke fun at five models that are gone and good riddance. So without further ado, let's get to the good stuff. Number one, an oldie, but a goldie, the Mark I Land Raider. What is there to say about the old Land Raider? It was a staple of the Space Marine arsenal. It was a round chunkster of a tank, being equal parts round, wide, and tall. It demonstrates a lovable disregard for engineering, physics, and realism. I love it. The new Land Raiders look way better, but this model is where it all started. Now Forge World does make a new version of this model in the Land Raider Protus, and it is a worthy successor. I mean, it's clearly better in every way, but that's not really the point. The point is, it's goofy, and in that lies the charm. If I can get my hands on one of these babies, I'll give it a grim dark 40k makeover. It'll be the cutest little Black Templar Land Raider Crusader this side of Ultramar. Coming in at number two, Short Bellacor. Now I thought this model had vanished a long time ago, but it turns out that it was hiding over on the Age of Sigmar side of the web store. Until, of course, it was completely upstaged by a legendary new model. I mean, look at what this guy became. The new Bellacore is amazing, but I think the old Bellacore was one of the better demon models Games Workshop has ever made. A lot of the other demon models feel very mindless, but this guy looks like a final boss. He's got some real personality. Bellacore has existed in both 40k and fantasy, and it's interesting to see him get a big old refresh. I don't know if it's his six-pack abs or winning smile, but I just love the look of the old Bellacore. And speaking of Demon Princes, the old Metal Fine Cast Demon Prince is my third pick. Now I have painted the new Demon Prince, and it's not a bad model, but I think this is one of the rare instances where a metal model is replaced with a plastic version, and it is a bit of a downgrade. The old 40k Demon Prince stood out as clearly a Space Marine, who was given the ultimate blessings of chaos. The new model is hurt by its gimmick of being both the Warhammer 40k Demon Prince and the Age of Sigmar Demon Prince. It looks pretty good, and I love the famous giving the finger pose, but it doesn't really feel like a Space Marine. The old model had all the parts of Space Marine power armor. Its body is segmented into the parts, the greaves, the shoulders. His demonic head even still has the weird little air intake mohawk that Space Marine helmets have. The new model is a little too sci-fi for fantasy and a little bit too fantasy for sci-fi. I don't think it fits into either perfectly. But the old Demon Prince was absolutely THE Warhammer 40k Demon Prince. For number 4, I picked the old metal venerable Dreadnought. I love this model, so much that I actually bought one. I got this new in-box and assembled it with lots of pinning and epoxy. Now this is what I think a Venerable Dreadnought should look like. It's dripping with decorations. Everything, the exhaust, the cockpit, the feet, everything is ornamented and that makes sense. Venerable Dreadnoughts are ancient. The new Venerable Dreadnought plastic kit might as well be called the Everything Dreadnought because it comes with tons of upgrade parts and weapons, but it doesn't feel that special. And even if you glue on all the upgrades, it still feels like a normal vanilla Dreadnought. Usually, whenever anyone runs a Dreadnought, whichever flavor it is, they use the Venerable Kits. It's also a problem that no one buys the OG Dreadnought anymore. The only reason anyone buys it is because it comes with the Missile Launcher arm. That's the only reason. I think the new plastic kit is solid, but it misses the artistry on display with the old metal Dreadnoughts. And finally, number 5, the Tomb King Sphinx. I know it's fantasy, but I want one. I started playing 40k in the tail end of 6th edition, so fantasy was winding down, and I saw this model everywhere, and it is amazing. I get why Tomb Kings died. They were just Earth Egyptians, and Games Workshop was not good at making skeletons back in the day. But this model really feels more like a modern Age of Sigmar than a Warhammer Fantasy Battles model. This is a model that I intend to keep my eyes open for on eBay. It would look great on the shelf. 
It is beautiful, it's the perfect mix of monster and statue, and I don't know how any Thousand Sun players can field a Mutalith Vortex Beast and not proxy one of these models. I mean, can you imagine how good this would look flanked by some Thousand Suns and Zangors? Come on. I want to start a Thousand Suns army just to make that picture happen. Those were the great models that have been put out to pasture. They will be missed, and although the grief is lightened by the amount of awesome new Plastic Games Workshops pumping out, those models will remain in my thoughts and in my heart. Now with that said, let's look at the crap. Number 1. The Old Sisters of Battle They fought the good fight, they were the last models released in 2nd edition, and they were great in 1997. You know what, they were great, for like 20 years, they kept the Sisters of Battle alive and popular for all those years so that now, Games Workshop sees the need to release a whole new range of Sisters of Battle in stunning plastic. These old metal sisters deserve some major respect. But that doesn't mean they're still good. They suffer from the old hand sculpted mini look, awkward poses, 40% of their bodies are covered up by their bolt guns, the heroic scale sculpting made their hands, heads, and feet so big that they look like little dwarves, and next to the new sculpts, they just look silly. Number 2. The Old Metal Eldar Banshees It is very fitting that probably the best looking Aspect Warriors are the first to get some saucy new plastic models. The Eldar Aspect Warriors are in desperate need of a refresh, and the Banshees are hopefully the first to get a sexy revamp. The classic look is decent, but they look more like they're dancing than sprinting forward into battle. They're tap dancing an Irish jig. The new models took what was there and just finished them. They bolted them out, strengthened the poses, and made the weapons bigger. They made them as badass as they should be. For number 3, I'm going to cheat a little bit and say all the old Chaos upgrades. Now these are from an interesting time in the Chaos, where a lot of the magic was in using the old squatty Chaos bodies and then swapping in the metal upgrades. Or if you were brave enough, or foolish enough, the fine cast upgrades. I know a lot of Chaos players are waiting for their color of Chaos to get their codex and units, because that's what the Space Marines got, but I don't know if you should be holding out hope. The Plague Marines and Thousand Suns were taken from little upgrade sprues into whole new armies with unique units and war gear. The Death Guard and Thousand Sons got their books, and I assume the corn-loving World Eaters and the Slaneshi Emperor's Children will one day be made into their own armies, and then Chaos will be finished. Number 4. The Hilariously Bad Old Sentinel This model is just on the list for the lulls. It's the definition of a chicken walker. How on earth was the pilot handling both the gun and driving the tank, with both hands on the gun? Is he Fred Flintstoning the legs? Is he on a treadmill? Does he have a Dance Dance Revolutions gamepad on there? It's just adorable. Thank goodness some designer at Games Workshop watched Return of the Jedi and learned how to make really cool chicken walkers. The old model is fun, I like that it has the same exact power plant as a dreadnought, and seems to be armed with an assault cannon. If a modern sentinel could take assault cannons, I think they'd probably see a lot more play. And I think I'm gonna make myself very unpopular with this one, but for number 5, good riddance, they are gone models, I pick the squats. Come on now, you know I'm right. Squats have been dead for nearly 30 years. You gotta walk that off by now. Games Workshop tried out Space Dwarves and they were not enough demand, so they let the Tyranids eat them. They looked goofy. They looked bad. They're from a time when 40k was just Tolkien fantasy in space. But 40k has evolved past that to become its own thing. The Dwarves are very specifically fantasy, the type of fantasy that doesn't work really well in the grim darkness of the far future. Do they have power armor? Well, then they're just Space Marines. Do they fight in hordes? Well, then they're just the Guard. Are they hooligans that drive around on motorbikes? Well, then they're just the orcs. There is no room for them in 40k. They're still around as a meme, but I don't think we'll see them back. Forge Royal made a couple new ones for Necromunda, and I think that's perfect. Let's just leave it at that. And there you have a trip down memory lane, looking at some old models, some great, some not so great, but all important pieces of the puzzle that is Games Workshop. I wonder if in another 20 years, what current models we will look back on as oddities. What models we think are badass now, but will become novelties in the future? Dude, check it out! I use the old Tau Riptide models! How retro is that? In addition to the occasional spicy opinion piece, we make Wargaming tutorials each and every week, and if you want more, the best way to support us is over on Patreon. Over there, you'll get to vote on what models I paint live on YouTube, some behind the scenes, and other exclusive content. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite minis that are no longer in production, and am I completely wrong about the squats? And as always, thanks for watching.